My name is Dan Blasberg. I am the Vice President of Maryland Shell Issue, and I would like to I would like to welcome everybody to the first annual 2A Tuesday. Uh, we hope to make this an annual event. The idea behind this event is to turn as many people out to remind our legislators, uh, our elected officials, that last year was not a fluke. Last year was not a flash in the pan. We are here. We will continue to be here. We will continue to speak for our civil rights for the Second Amendment. With that, I would like to introduce our first speaker, uh, Ms. Sarah Merkel, who is the secretary of the Maryland Rifle Association. She is also a very proficient high-powered rifle shooter. She's much better than I am. Um, and she spoke very eloquently, not once, but twice last year in front of the House and the Senate. So with that, I give you Sarah Merkel. Hi, I just, thanks for the welcome. <laughs> just wanted to remind everybody that it's very important that we're here today. And of all the things, I know for all the things that I would have been doing this week, this is the most important. Ladies and gentlemen, for me personally, I can say that I'm not here for guns today. And that sounds weird, but I'm not. It's not that simple. It's not as simple just to say we're here for a simple inanimate object. We are here for the Constitution and to keep the foundation of our nation strong. The problem is larger than us. It's larger than just our guns. And now it's larger than even words on a paper. It has come to the point where we realize our legislators, or most of them, are not representing us. And that's a problem that we need to fix. Our legislators like to tell us that our rights have limits. And in a way they do. Their favorite example is that you can't shout fire in a crowded movie theater. Well, as long as we're comparing our First and Second Amendment rights, I'd like to point a few things out. First of all, just because you can't shout fire in a crowded movie theater doesn't mean they strap duct tape over your lips and tell you can't ever talk at all because somebody might misuse their right. That, of course, being said, you shouldn't legislate away the right to bear arms and have guns just because somebody might misuse it at some point in their lives. And second of all, if you think about it, the reason the First Amendment isn't usually as much of a problem as people like to think that the Second Amendment is, is because from a very young age, ever since you were born, you were always educated on how to and how to not use your First Amendment right. People taught you the golden rule to treat people the way you wanted to be treated. That you, sh if you don't have anything nice to say, don't say anything at all. And I think that's why some people aren't here to speak to their legislators today. But maybe that's just me. <laughs> but it's because of those things, it's because of that education that people don't create so much of a problem with their First Amendment right. That we know, that we teach our children. When you go to school, you're supposed to be nice to people. You don't tell them that they're never allowed to talk around you, that they can't socialize with their friends, that they can't go and confront their teachers about something because they might insult them or say something offensive. You educate them. So why are we not doing the same thing with our Second Amendment? And likewise, we tell our children when they go to school that if some, in the off chance that somebody does insult you, they do use that right to say something against you, to make you feel bad about yourself, you tell them how to avoid that, to be the bigger person, how to stand against this person without abusing either of your rights and still solving the problem. But our legislators seem to think that instead of letting us use the Second Amendment in the same way, where we can use our Second Amendment to protect ourselves when other people infringe upon that right or try to take it from us, to take ourselves, our lives, our families' lives away from us, that we should just stand there. And if you stand there long enough, the person with the firearm will just lay it down and walk away.
but I don't think that's right. We need to take a stand and we need to let them know that this is our Second Amendment right and they can't take it away. And if you do come upon the chance where you're trying to take our lives, we will use it against you. Our senators sometimes seem to realize that you can't just legislate or create a piece of legislation that bans a mental illness. You can't tell people they can't live in your society and eat and breathe next to you because they're, they have aggressive tendencies or a mental illness or they're depressed. You can't get rid of those things from the society, but you can protect other people against the effects of that. So even if you were able to take away guns from all those people, all you're gonna do is create the problems that you see in other nations who do have strict gun control where they go around stabbing people with knives and screwdrivers. That doesn't fix the problem. Sure, taking away guns might reduce gun-related crimes, but if somebody hurts me or my family, I don't care what they hurt us with. I care that I lost somebody. I'm not looking for you just to get rid of gun-related crimes. I want all violent crimes to be done with. I want to know that I'm safe no matter where I go or who I'm with, because there are people around me who are armed who can take care of themselves. And let me tell you right now, gun control did not save the lives of the people in Columbia Mall like an educated and responsible firearm owner would have. And until you can get your gun control laws and guarantee me safety, no matter where I go with your little piece of paper, I don't want to hear about it, because I'm not buying into it. My rights don't exist so that somebody in a suit in a building can vote on them and agree or disagree with whether or not they should be there. My Second Amendment right, our Second Amendment right, isn't for us to see. It's for the politicians to see and be forewarned of what will happen if they try to take it away. Those first ten amendments at the end of the Constitution that they like to ignore is not a bill of privileges. It's a bill of rights. So I want to thank everybody for coming today, and I want to encourage you guys to go speak to your legislators, go talk to them, talk to them, your friends, your family. Let people know that this is an issue, and it is not an issue that we're willing to stand for. Thank you. Thank you, Sarah. Next up, I would like to uh, introduce the uh, NRA uh, representative for the state of Maryland, who needs no introduction. I give you Ms. Shannon Alford. Good morning. I am so glad to see that all of the nightmares I was having last night about a horrible, sleeting, freezing did not come to fruition. Apparently, somebody up there likes what we're doing. So, uh, as Dan said, I am the NRA State Liaison for the State of Maryland. I am incredibly proud and pleased to have that job. Um, I have a boss. His name is Chuck. He's awesome. But uh, I work for you. I work for every single one of you, and I work for every single NRA member in this state, and I work for every single person who identifies as a law-abiding citizen who cares about their Second Amendment rights. And I come down here in Annapolis every session, when they're not in session, specifically to make sure that your voices get heard. But that's not enough. And that is why I'm so, so pleased to see all of you out here today. Because I can only meet with so many people, but all of you can meet with your legislators. All of you can talk to your friends, and your friends can write emails to their legislators. And all of you and all of your friends, and all of your family members, and your neighbors, and the people you run into in the grocery store, the people you run into at the rifle range, you can all vote. And ultimately, that's what it comes down to. 
is because every vote that the legislature takes in there needs to be paid attention to and remembered by all of you and all of your circles in November, November of this year. We have so little time left. It seems like it's so far away. It's hardly any time at all. Last year, we all came out here, we reacted. This year, we're having this event. There's no bill hearings today. You guys aren't even being asked to sign up and testify. We're gonna ask you to come back. We're gonna ask you to come back a couple of times. But today, today is about being proactive. Today is about reaching out and reminding everybody in this building, everybody in these buildings, and everybody who couldn't be here today. Everybody who had to work, everybody who's watching at home, everybody who's gonna see this on the news tonight, reminding all of those people that, like Dan said, like Sarah said, like everybody's gonna say, last year was not a fluke. Last year we reacted, today we're being proactive. Today we're coming out to assert our rights. We're coming out to defend our rights. We're coming out to make sure that everybody's aware that the dragon that got awoken last year is still on patrol. And we're gonna pay attention this year. We're gonna pay attention to the votes that got taken last year. We're gonna pay attention to the votes that get taken this year. And we're gonna take all those votes and we're gonna carry them with us. And we're gonna carry them with us into the one poll that actually matters the one that happens in November. And if everybody gives just a little bit, come out, meet with your legislator one time, send an email, talk to somebody, invite somebody that you've never taken shooting before, take them with you to the range, have a conversation with somebody in the line at the grocery store or at Walmart when you're buying that all too elusive box of nine millimeter ammunition. <laughs> if everybody does just a little bit more than they've done before, and if people do just a little bit more than that, we can make a huge difference in November. We can make all the difference in the world. And won't that be a sight to see? Yeah. I have the distinct honor and pleasure of being able to introduce a gentleman who needs, I'm sure, no introduction to this fine group of individuals, Delegate Mike Smeagol.